Well, that wasn't funny at all, but welcome to our Silly Season recap. Um, Silly Season happened, it's over, and we're all happy about it because that was really, really boring. Um, Nothing happened. What Silly Season? There was no Silly Season. Didn't exist this year. Pretty much. I mean, it, it... didn't didn't happen silly season Um, 2023 was canceled that's that is my take (laughs) yeah silly season 2023 got cannibalized by everything that happened before silly season and so everyone was like you know what we're actually gonna go on vacation and not talk about driver contracts for three weeks and gave us nothing to focus on how many yachts can we jump on during silly season and and not actually have anything eventful go on that's that is my recap yachting jet skiing accidentally breaking some elbows total wolf we hope you're feeling better um and as when this episode comes up it will finally be race week and we cannot be happier yeah seriously i'm i'm so excited to to get back into things and see some racing again well welcome back from camp Catherine. it looks like your background is a little a little different than last time you're not in a bunk bunk room anymore so where no uh, I'm, i'm not where are you joining us from today well, I am no longer sitting in front of my bunk bed because I no longer have a bunk bed because I am home. I am back in Arizona. Um, I drove back on uh, a week, about a week ago when this, when this episode goes up. Um, thank goodness, because we were all just very, very tired, except now that I'm back in Arizona, it's hot here and I don't like it because I don't do heat very well and it's about 110 degrees outside. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm in winter. <laughs> I have no oh sympathy no, for you. it's so cold. You have to par- bury yourself under a bunch of blankets. How awful! I know. I have like my blanket on because I'm cold, and my sweatshirt, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's not too cold. It's just like I don't know. I have a really inconvenient draft going through my apartment constantly because I live in an old building, so we just constantly like it's just always cold, but. Anyways, how long were you at camp? Um, I was at camp for about 10 weeks, uh, two and a half months. Okay, that tracks. I was going to say, it yeah. felt like you were there for a really long time. So 10 weeks. Yeah, uh... I, I left the first week of June and it is now the middle of August. And so fortunately I missed like a brunt of the heat. But obviously, you know, if I'm recording a podcast and we want good audio, I can't have my air conditioning on for the next, you know, however long this episode takes us. So the I, have, things you do I will for probably us, get Catherine. a little sweaty. The exactly. things you do for us. We, do, we don't deserve exactly. you. We don't deserve <laughs> you. Yeah, so so that was, um, yeah, my, my summer adventure has come to a close. It was um, better than last summer. Let's just leave it at that. We like that. We like to hear that. Always moving up. Always exactly. moving up. So, awesome. Well, like Catherine and I kind of got into a little bit, this is our Silly Season Recap episode, and it also was supposed to be our very first episode, <laughs> but yes. we got, you know, a little bored and needed something to do and wanted to release episodes before today, so, or before we this just, episode, so. We, I just, we felt so incredibly impatient and we're like, okay, we have all this stuff set up, we have everything we need, why shouldn't we start putting out episodes and then you know the Alphatari um news from early July really gave us the perfect excuse to just take that messy action and throw up a podcast episode when we barely knew what we were doing um and I was obviously sitting through you know a bunch of power outages um but yeah this was this was intended to be our first episode of the podcast and now it is our fourth episode of the fourth or fifth I don't know Look at us go. We're old pros now. <laughs> Not exactly. really, but we, we're we know there. what we're doing. <laughs> exactly. uh, no, but this this is as it is race week. Thank God, um, we will have our um, our uh, deep predictions for the Dutch Grand Prix coming out later this week, and also maybe another bonus episode or something coming up either this week or next week about a certain book that was recently released by a certain team principal from Haas. And one of your certain co-host just needs to finish said book so we can record but uh yeah no I'm really looking forward to one finishing the book and two recording an episode on it because I'm like 30% through and I I love everything I'm I'm hearing because I'm doing the audio book because I'm that's how I get through my books I don't read I listen to them um but I'm really enjoying hey, however everything. it works, it works. <laughs> I'm but honestly even if I read books 
I would have listened to this audiobook because listening to Gunther is like the greatest thing ever. So love him in everything he does. Um, and so getting to listen to like eight hours of uninterrupted, you know, Gunther is amazing. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, and also to like, just give you guys a little foreshadowing here, our podcast structure going forward, we'll continue with the F101s, but for race weeks, we're going to do, um, GP predictions. Those episodes will come out on Thursdays and then we'll have a GP recap for you guys coming out on Monday. So we will be coming out with two episodes a week. I know we're so dedicated. We love this. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> it might be a lot, but, um, but yeah, so going forward, you can look forward to two episodes a week from us. Um, but yeah, so I want to get into the, yeah. the silly season recap, Catherine. Or lack yeah, the, 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 the silly season that, that really wasn't. Obviously, there were a lot of things that happened before silly season. You know, Daniel Ricardo coming back onto the grid was one of the biggest ones. And I think the other, you know, a grid adjacent pit wall uh, news was really everything that happened with Alpine's restructuring. Um, and, you know, the just everything that happened there, you know, um, AlphaTauri, whatever they're going to be called next season, they're going to be getting a new team principal. Um, and yeah, so those were, that, that was like the big hits for before silly season. But then actually during silly season, we had very little to talk about and everything that we do have to talk about, you know, other than a couple minor announcements are things that are, you know, reported or are probably happening but we haven't gotten the official confirmation yet which hopefully will happen um as we go through this week and also probably won't actually come out until you know toward the end of the season yeah exactly it's all still unsubstantiated rumors but it's like from sources really close to everyone involved so yeah not a ton of concrete things like we were hoping for so yeah I mean the one of the one of the biggest pieces of news is that we had uh you know uh, last week Nick DeVries um recently ousted at Alpatari announced that he's going to do some studying at Harvard and he's taking the business school route that Nicholas Latifi has taken and and that was kind of one of the the actual real announcements that we got from silly season which great for him glad that he's 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 doing something I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's happy you know what I was wondering when that came out? Like, I think it was, well, it wasn't my original thought. I can't take claim for this, but it made me think that all of the memes with like Toto teaching and then like Nick DeVries sitting in the classroom, like, I wonder if he's going to be taking Toto's leadership classes. For those of you who don't know, Toto Wolf is like a guest, like professor, guest lecturer at um, Harvard. And so there's potential that Nick DeVries could now be his student. <laughs> So that yeah, was... I mean, who who knows? Maybe that conversation at that coffee shop in Monaco the week after after DeVries lost his seat was Toto saying, "Hey, go to Harvard, take my classes, and then we'll figure out getting you back in into to racing in a year or two. Yeah, in reality, it had nothing to do with racing. It was all just Toto selling him on Harvard. <laughs> I mean, why not? It it is Harvard, a school that I didn't even consider applying to when I was going to college. Never. Whatever. Never. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I wonder what makes him qualified to go to Harvard. Just that he's, um, like, an F1 driver. Like, I mean, that's one hell of an entrance essay. <laughs> a qualification. <laughs> yeah, I, I got kicked out of my racing seat, so now I want to be a business person. So I can, I don't know, run my own F1 team one day. Whatever. Good for him. But yeah. um, another kind of more-ish concrete... Um, item that came out. Um, there were reports that emerged that Leclerc um, signed a multi-year extension with Ferrari because his current one ends after this year or after next year, next 2024. Um, years are really hard for me. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so his contract ends after the 2024 season. So it's rumored and reports came out that he signed a multi-year deal with Ferrari, which I think we already kind of talked about this one and called this one that he was going to extend with Ferrari. Like, he is their golden child. He will stay with them for a really long time. I feel like they're kind of developing a relationship with him similar to Lewis and Mercedes. Like, as long as he wants to stay, they'll let him stay and just keep 
you know, keeping him on. I don't know. What do you think about yeah. it? Do you think this is true? Um, I, I kind of do, but I also kind of don't because... Um, team principal Fred Vasseur came out and basically said that we're not going to talk about contracts for either of our drivers until the end of the 2024 season. Um, so does it surprise me that there are rumors that Leclerc has a multi-year extension in front of him? No. It, do I think it's true? Also, no. Do I think it's inevitably going to happen? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because then you also have a couple days later the reports coming out that Signs has signed a pre-contract with Audi, who's coming on the grid in a couple of years for 2025, which, you know, he what was ultimately debunked a couple of days later, but that's the thing that I do believe is going to be happening. Um, he just can't come out and say it yet. Yeah, and again, that's something that we talked about on a previous episode, too, of how we think Sainz is going to make the move to Audi, which I think would be a really good move for him. And I think Audi, too, is going to be a really strong team to come to the grid. I think just, I don't know, I'm interested to see what Audi does. But I think it'll be a good move for Carlos. I know it was debunked and he said no, whatever, but... Also, these whole, like, emotionally signed contracts, pre-contracts, like, pre-contract like pre pre all of this stuff is so dumb but we all sit here and still talk about it because it's like the only thing that we have to talk about but it's like what the heck is even a pre-contract because it's not even a contract it's not legally binding it literally means nothing like I could say I have a pre-contract to drive next year and I obviously don't but yeah but I, I still know. think that he is there there are negotiations opened and I think that you know Depending on who is on the grid and who looks good, I don't think that Ferrari would, would, you know, fight that hard to keep him if there's somebody else on the grid that they can see pairing better with um, Charles, which I think that, you know, pairing better really just means somebody who's not going to be as upset as Carlos gets when they favor Charles over him during races, yeah. um, which as as you may have seen in, in previous episodes, and you will see when this inevitably happens during the second half of the season, Emily and I are going to get really frustrated about that um, when, when that ultimately happens to Carlos, because Carlos, we feel, is, you know, a stronger driver that is not getting the respect that he deserves in his seat. Yeah, and I feel like um, every episode moving forward, uh, like in our race recap, we just need the five minutes to bitch about Ferrari and everything that went wrong and apologize to Carlos Sainz and then we can move on with the rest of the episode because inevitably that will happen. That's usually what happens in our DM chat uh, every single race. It's like, what is Ferrari doing? They don't know because there's no strategy. What are they doing to Carlos? Poor Carlos. Poor Carlos. Oh, Carlos, Carlos, Carlos. Of course they're messing up Carlos. So pretty much we should just make that like a standing segment of our podcast of like, which, to be fair, we're going to have that a little bit uh, in a little while because we're going to be talking about um, Ferrari's um, influence on um, Felipe Massa's crash gate litigation that's coming. But we will talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, yes. But some of it does involve Ferrari just being Ferrari. And this, this is this is not new. But well, back to what the, happened during silly season. Back to silly season. Getting back on track here. Um, but also part of but also to like swerve a little bit to go back to the Massa thing because this next individual um had some like is affected by that um yes. lewis hamilton rumors are out reports are out um about lewis hamilton that he has verbally agreed to a new contract with mercedes we all kind of saw this coming had thoughts about this absolutely no details we have no length of time we have no numbers nothing super vague again goes along the lines of this dumb emotionally signed contract thing but and now instead of being emotional it's verbal who knows what's going on but yeah Kathy, i think we're you getting have details a really... about it this week though yeah so and if we do we can recap it um in another in the next episode as as contract stuff comes out we'll recap it for you guys but you have a really good take on lewis's contract 
yeah, I just, I, th- with the way that they've been talking about it, and who knows, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am, but that's also because I'm really stubborn. Um, and I just think that they're, the reason why they called this an, an emotionally signed contract is because they're feeling emotional about the fact that whatever contract this is, this could be Lewis's last contract with Mercedes and his last contract with Formula One, because he's not going anywhere. I mean, I would love to see the upheaval of on the grid of him announcing a move to Ferrari, because that would just be hilarious um but it's definitely not happening well um, and but there I, were reports I do think and rumors too that like yeah. he was asked by ferrari to come to ferrari and he said like thank you but no thank you i'm which not which probably anywhere. happened which i do, yeah i don't doubt that it did and like the you know head guys all at ferrari went to him like in person and asked him personally if he wanted to make the the move which i think you know, is a cool thing, but there's absolutely no way he's moving to Ferrari. Well, yeah, because the car kind of explodes sometimes, and, like, the Mercedes has issues, but at least it doesn't catch fire every three races. Hey, we haven't caught fire yet this year. There's still half a season, but give us some credit. Yeah, so so I think, um, I believe that we're going to, Allegedly, we were told that we're going to get some details about Lewis's contract um, this week. Um, So hopefully we'll get some clarification. I think that this may, um, you know, I I think that he could extend with Mercedes until the next regulation change coming in 26. So he would drive through 25 and, you know, go off into the sunset. Um, Or he will be like Fernando and he'll be racing until, you know, he's a senior citizen. So you really never know with with them. Um, And it's just a bunch of shrugs and just waiting and seeing well and I wonder like if they would do like an open-ended contract of just like you be here however long you want I feel like that they can't but I feel like maybe behind the scenes like that's the discussion that they're having I don't know it's just with him you never I just don't know yeah, I think, well, obviously the only person on the grid with an open-ended contract is Lance Stroll. Um, and now that's, Does he even know, have a contract? I don't know what, nobody knows what kind of agreement Lance has because obviously his daddy owns the team. Um, but, you know, I think that Lance will drive as long as he is interested in driving. Um, and I think that when he decides that he wants to retire, um, that will throw one of those big wrenches in the grid and we'll see a lot of movement that I don't think we're going to see this year that we could possibly see next year in 2024. Yeah. I know. I feel like next year is going to be the, some bigger moves but also we kind of like we're talking about how this wasn't going to be a big you know silly season because of when contracts are ending um and also because of the Danny Rick thing so I don't know there's I think it was mostly because of the Danny Rick thing yeah that that really settled things down because you have this one big explosive thing that happens um because if you look we have seven contracts seven drivers on the grid that are that are ending their contracts this season of that you have four um who we expect to see on the grid next year that's lewis at mercedes um joe guan yu is expected to be retained by alfa romeo for 2024 and then both haas drivers are also expected to be retained for 2024 and i don't see any wrenches in those you know discussions they think that that's what's going to happen yeah and one of those so one driver who has a contract ending this year is Logan Sargent and again we talked about this I feel like we've already talked about everything that's coming out of silly season which means everything was super predictable or we're really really good at this um but both (laughs) <laughs> well, a little bit of both. Um, but rumors came out that Mick Schumacher is, you know, really high on the candidate list to replace Logan Sargent at Williams for 2024, um, which we called and we thought this would actually come out um, in the summer break and be announced. It hasn't yet. So I think maybe they're giving him a little bit more time. So maybe it'll be announced later in the season. But I don't. I really don't think Logan's going to have much longer Um, in an F1 seat. I just don't see it. He hasn't been strong at all this year. He's barely made it out of Q1 in qualifying. Um, He's just really, really struggling. I think he may have been brought up a little too soon um, to F1. And it would be nice to see Mick back on the grid. Yeah, I think that um, I agree with you. I think that also Williams took a look at what 
you know, Red Bull and what Helmut Marco made the decision for regarding um, Nick DeVries and said, we're not that brutal. Um, yeah. We're, 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 we're not like that. And I, I don't think that James Vowles would do that, especially because he's only been the team principal for half of the season. Um, I mean, he just started with the team in January. Um, so I think that that's one of the reasons. And I think that they will make those announcements for Logan and potentially for Mick replacing Logan in November toward the end of the year, um, depending on how, how Logan performs and who knows he might have had like the summer break of his life you know hanging out in Miami and doing whatever he does down in Florida um, and is going to come back and is going to start out qualifying Albon and out you know everything Albon outscoring him too so who who knows um, I don't think that's going to happen but who knows you know we, we could have miracles um, I also think that and and people have been talking about this a lot that Albon is going to be a really interesting piece to the chessboard in 2024 when his contract opens up I agree I think for the hard thing is like Williams is trying to bring in the right people and trying to attract drivers. One, they don't have the like extreme, everyone has the same budget, but they don't. Um, mm-hmm. Cause the top three salaries don't count towards the budget cap. So that is, you know, you can only pay your drivers as much money as you have. And Williams is a smaller team, but I think bringing in James and having Albon, if they can keep Albon and get their car into a better spot, I think Williams could potentially be competitive again. Yeah, I and I, I think that most of us want that. I mean, Williams is one of the most historic teams on the grid, right up there with McLaren and Ferrari, and seeing them down in the basement in the standings is, is really hard. Like, obviously, yeah. it was it was really hard a couple years ago when um, when the Williams family ended up selling um, the team because they just weren't getting the performance out of it, but they also wanted to keep the team and keep that name on the grid because of, you know, just how historic and how, how valuable Williams is to the sport of Formula One. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I'd like to, I mean, I would like to see Albon stay there and get the, have the car get stronger and see where he can go, but I feel like Albon's going to end up moving. He's just, he's yeah. doing so well in that car that there's no way someone's not going to grab him. Yeah, I mean, the question would be where. Um, and he, I mean, I know. wonder if he would go to like Audi in 2025. That could be one option. Him and signs. That'd be an interesting... Yeah. I could I don't I know. Could see that. I think the whole Audi thing is going to be really interesting. Yeah, the Audi thing. And then also, we're, we're potentially going to be getting news next month in September um, for um, a potential 11th team on the grid. And that's going to, you know, have the potential to cause a, a lot of movement. And that would obviously bring in two more drivers into, into the mix. And so we would go to tw- from 20 to 22. Um, and that would, and be, this is like an really big actual team, not the Apple TV movie with Brad Pitt, 11th team. Like this is like Correct. an actual, like, just to clarify, <laughs> this is the FIA is talking about, um, approving an 11th team, letting an 11th team onto the grid, um, allowing like another license to have a team. So this would actually be opening up the field. So instead of having 20 drivers, there'd be 22. Um, and so that brings in like, yeah, that would be, that would get wild because it's, you have two people who don't have a seat who are going to get a seat, but then you have a brand new team where people, they could pull people from another team. Um, and then you'd have a lot of shifting, so it it could get a uh, very interesting, but yeah, we'll see. Exactly. And that yeah, you were because I that's September, right, or is it later? I think they they said it was going to be in uh, sometime in September that they were going to okay. announce that. Yeah, I'm interested. I feel like they'll turn it down, but I would like to see an 11th I mean, team. I think it'd make things interesting. Too. I mean, yeah. My dad's a really big Andretti fan, so he would just, like, kill to see Andretti on the grid. Yeah, because it's, it's Cadillac and Andretti, right? No. I believe so. It, it, okay, yeah. I thought, no. BMW and Andretti? I know it's, no, like... No, it's not no, it's BMW. I think, I think Cadillac and Andretti are trying to, okay. to come Okay, that's what together. I thought it was, too. Um, yeah, but, so we shall see. Um, that's a fun you one. Know, Audi's coming in as a replacement... Um, 
I believe, as a, a replacement constructor. Um, yeah, so we, we we will see. It's a lot of, you know, question marks up in the air. I mean, you know, in our rundown, one of the things that we have listed is, you know, Charles Leclerc came out with new music, and we have that on our rundown because we're so bored and nothing else has been announced, um, and that, that happened Um last week and you know good for him he's keeping himself occupied and playing the piano isn't that this, cute this kid i don't get it like he has more someone again on instagram because i have no life and that's all i do is scroll through f1 content on instagram but someone was like he has more songs come out this year than like races one race i mean yeah, yeah race, he does which he i mean honestly races. yeah because no one's won except for max and checo but um yeah, I don't know. It's it's just funny. So, um, poor kid getting getting yeah. cold. But he's not. He's actually a very good piano player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I so it's yeah. That's just that's another thing. It happened, and we're just really scraping the bottom of the barrel for Ooh. content that isn't just unsubstantiated rumors. Yeah. Um, and do you want to yeah, do think, um? go through the drivers with the contracts ending and just kind of like recap that and see what our thoughts are. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, we've got starting with Lewis, which we talked um, about the contract yeah. is like kind of being announced. Not really. We'll hear about it when we hear about it, but it's yeah. happening. Then we've got Logan Sargent, um, Williams, which is a, just a bunch of question marks. And he's probably going to be off the grid. Um, Joe Guan Yu expects to be retained by Alfa Romeo next season. Um, the Haas drivers both expected to be retained by Haas for 2024, and I don't see that changing. Um, and then the the real question, and and I this this isn't really a question, but it is currently a question: is what's going to happen at AlphaTauri? Because um, Yuki's contract for both is seats. Up. For both yeah, seats. Yeah, and, and Daniel doesn't technically have a contract there because he's on loan. Um, I personally think that he, um, since the the rumor is that AlphaTauri is going to be getting um, this year's Red Bull for next season, um, that that means that Danny's going to stay at AlphaTauri for the year and compete with Checo for um, Checo's seat at Red Bull for 2025. Yeah. And they'll keep Yuki because Yuki is a solid driver and the Alphatari is just a really bad car this year. Well, and Yuki's like a, he's your solid middleman, like always right there, sometimes in the point, sometimes not. This year, not so much. But he also, I think, is growing and he's showing more maturity. He's not like crashing a ton. This year, he's doing a lot better. And he's come out and said, like, I've learned a lot from Danny. So if they're keeping Danny next year, I feel like they'll keep Yuki around as well and just see how he can grow under Danny because I feel like that relationship is is going to be good for the both of them. But Yeah, ab absolutely. I, I think that there's no reason to get rid of Yuki. Um, He's also cheap. Like, oh, his yeah, contract, I mean, like his contract is super cheap and Honda pays his contract, so it's not yeah, even yeah. like... They have they have the the they can they can afford it. Yeah, exactly. So it's well, there's that, but also like if you're trying to go out and attract another driver, who are you going to get after the season that you're having at AlphaTauri? You're not going to get anyone. It's easy. It's just easier, and it makes more sense to keep Yuki around. So I don't yeah. think they're going mean, to really have a change. I up. don't think their their only option would probably be Liam Lawson, um, who's one of the Red Bull young drivers. But I don't think that they would want to risk that with you know unfortunately with how you know logan has proved that you know logan may have came come out of formula two too soon um and i don't think that they're going to run the same risk with lawson and that you know it'll it'll take a, at least a year or two before we see you know any of these drivers get promoted into formula one again you know we had a lot of those over the years we had the year with um albon lando and george all rookies together and that obviously worked out really well because they're all phenoms. Um, but then you had, you know, the year of Mick and Mazepin, um, which didn't work out as well. And so I think that, you know, a lot of teams are a lot more reluctant to see, um, you know, pulling pulling rookies out unless it's someone like Oscar Piastri, who's just insane and is absolutely a future world champion. Yeah, no, I agree. Gosh, you make yeah. such good points, Catherine. 
You're so good at this. I spend a lot of time looking at sports and watching sports and thinking about sports. And I think that's, that's why we're doing this. <laughs> that's why, that's the whole point of this. That's the whole point of this. Yeah. Um, and what do you think about the, the last rumor that we've got about the potential uh, name for the Alpine new team principal now that Otmar's gone? Um, so you're referring to Mattia Bonotto, mm-hmm. um, who was with Ferrari. Um, you know, I think it's super interesting. I think it'd be a really interesting choice. One, because he didn't do great things for Ferrari, and I feel like if Alpine's trying to go in a certain direction, um, and they got rid of Otmar, like, I don't think, I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's, it would be a weird direction, especially because Alpine is, like, super French, and so I feel like Mm -hmm. it'd be weird having, like, an Italian Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it just, like, it just seems like an odd pairing. Um, But I personally love Mattia. I love seeing him in interviews and seeing him just, like, looking like a mad scientist with his little glasses and crazy hair. Um, (laughs) But um, I don't know. It just, like, I feel like I understand why the rumor came out because he was like, oh, from Ferrari and... You know, the team principal position opened up, so it's, like, naturally. How many people can be a a team principal, right? That's a very unique role, and there's 10 teams. It's not like there's a ton of these people out there. So I feel like naturally the rumor came out because he would be a good fit, but I just, I don't know. I personally don't see it, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I... I think it's really interesting also Matias being paid a lot of, you know, like like McLaren um, paid, you know, Ricardo um, allegedly around $18 million to not race in 2024, 2023. Um, there, you know, Matias has one, of, from what I read, he has one of those agreements with Ferrari. Um, and so he's taking a payout to not be on the grid that he would have if he, ch- if he chose to come on um, and, and replace Otmar, um, he would be giving up some, some pretty significant significant money um I don't think that would stop him um and I think that you know if if one of your team owners is Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney um and they want Mattia they're gonna get Mattia um so you have to you know when when thinking about Alpine now you have to think about like they don't have a traditional leadership team anymore because their ownership group includes two crazy actor people that's true I keep forgetting about that I mean, no, we do. It's, I'm really interested to see what Alpine does next year. Because especially what yeah. they did with uh, Wrexham. I don't know if you watched Welcome to Wrexham, but it was, like, really cool. I watched some cool. of it. It, um, it was a really cool – I recommend you finishing it if you haven't. But um, it was really cool to see, like, how involved they are, the decisions that they make, the willingness for them to be like, we know nothing. We're going to just get experts who do know something. Um, they really – did a really good job with that team. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with Alpine. I definitely agree. Yeah, I, I plan to I, I plan to, to finishing, you know, eventually because I do want to see season two, especially because they do. Um, they got promoted. promoted. Yeah, the, the I know. Se- that they'll, they'll cover that this season. So I'm really excited to see that journey. I wish that they, you know, you know, broadcast wise, it's easier. That's a little easier to watch, you know, Wrexham games in the United States because who wouldn't want to watch a random Welsh soccer team? Um, but yeah, I think that it's going to be really interesting with that influence. You know, I know that it's only you know twenty four percent of of Alpine, but I still think that it's it's it would be very interesting to see what their influence is going to be on the team moving forward. Yeah, no, I wish it was easier to watch Wrexham games in the U.S. to like keep up with it live and stuff, but it's still a good show, and it it's going to be interesting to see. I'm really excited to see what they do with F1. And especially because, like, everything that they do commercially is just gold. So I think it'll be interesting to see, like, Esteban and Gasly um, thrown into the mix with that. Yeah. And then looking ahead to the second half of the season um we've got a number of drivers who are already ruled out of the championship none of these are are a surprise you know points wise they just mathematically can't do it so we've got 10 drivers at this point um pierre gasly alex albon nico hulkenberg valtteri botas 
Zhou Guan Yu, Yuki Tsunoda, Kevin Magnuson, Logan Sargent, and of course Daniel Ricardo and Nick DeVries. They are all mathematically ruled out. It ain't happening. Um, that's, you know, a little less than half the grid now that we have, you know, 21 drivers in contention thanks to Ricardo coming back in. Um, but what's really interesting is when mathematically is the earliest that Max can win. Um, and technically, um, I looked this up on ESPN. Thank you, ESPN. <laughs> um, technically, Max can win in Singapore. Um, it's just unlikely that he will hold a 207 point lead after after Singapore. Um, and um, but I mean, ultimately, it's it's about when, not if. At this point, he's just so far ahead. Um, and you know, even if he doesn't race, you know at all for most of the end you know rest of the season or if even if if Perez f like finishes the champion finishes every race and wins every weight race and secures every you know fastest lap point um Max will still win the title by 27 points which is insane and I love how yeah. it's just like when can Max win it's not like oh the race you know like who's there who's in contention it's just like when's the earliest Max will win <laughs> Like, that's yeah, the only statistic we're looking at, which is crazy because yeah. Singapore's in three races because we have Dutch mm -hmm. GP, we have Monza, and then it's Singapore. So, yeah. like, in a month, he could be world champion, which is insanity, but I wouldn't rule it out. Like, statistically, I think it's very low, but it could happen. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't either. It would shatter the record of you know, earliest number of, of win uh, or, or n number of most number of races to go before winning, which is um, Michael Shoemaker. And I think the, the record is five races. Um, so, you know, it, it is very possible that it would happen in Singapore. Um, it also was very possible it would happen in Singapore last year and did not happen. Um, it could also happen in Japan, but people are are really looking at Qatar as the the most likely spot for for Max to to win. He would only need to have a hundred and forty seven point lead, um, and and that will probably happen. I personally would think it would be super cool if he won it at Austin, just because that's an American race, and I think that Americans would lose their minds if that happened in Austin. Um, but I do think that it will be the the Qatar race. Grand Prix that that will happen I just think he, it's inevitable at this point and I think it's just you know it's 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 when um and that is a, a a solid spot for for a likely when yeah no it's it's wild like so talking about this do you think we're gonna have a season where one team wins every race like do you think Red Bull will win the rest of the races this year I mean I think that they can I think that it is a lot more likely than it was when people were asking Christian Horner about that, you know, after, you know, what, race three. Um, so I think that it's totally possible. But even as a massive Red Bull fan, I would still kill to see a Lando victory or a Fernando victory. Um, I, I would absolutely like to see both of those things. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't, as a Red Bull fan, need to see Red Bull win every race of the season. I, you know, I think that it's cool that they're winning. I think that it's also, you know, a credit to, to Formula One that, you know, it's not just about who's winning. It's also about, you know, everyone else in the standings and who's fighting for what position. Um, but I, I don't, you know, I don't need Red Bull to win all 22 races or tw what, however many races are left this season. I, I don't need that to happen. And see, I think it's funny you say that because I'm not a Red Bull fan and I'm like, okay, well, if you're going to win th this many, like you have to win, win them all because like you just have to go for it because if you don't, then it's like, what was this? What was this for? You know what I mean? Well, I mean like that's my gonna, viewpoint of they're it. They're going to go for it. Like, well, yeah, of course they're like going to go losing. for it. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if, if it's going to be such a like blowout season to everybody else, I want it to be like, oh, well, that's the season that Red Bull won every single race. So like, it doesn't really count as this season. Like it does. It'll go down as like one of the best seasons ever. But it's like for all the rest of us, it'll be like scratch asterisk. Like no one needs to worry about the 2023 season because it was just Max and Red Bull and everyone else. It was else the fight can... for second place. Exactly, exactly. Every week it's who's getting second. So, um, so I think like as a non-Red Bull fan, I think 
that I want to see it happen because of that. And also, I just think, I think it's such a good car. Like, we can't knock the engineering. Like, the car is built so, so well that I think it's a testament to the people at the factory that this car deserves to win every race. And, it like, I think it probably will. Unless Max wants to, you know, practice pit stops and, like, something happens in a pit stop and then he doesn't win a race. But besides that, I mean, I don't think there's really anything stopping it besides, like, a double DNF or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, and I, I just... The car is so reliable. Even when the car makes Max mad, it's still, you know, at least 10 seconds ahead of the field. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to see specifically Lando or Fernando win a race. Um, yeah. I want to see, I want to see, but Fernando I could also be very happy seeing, you know, that, you know, seeing Red Bull just going. And, and I, as somebody who has a soft spot for Checo, I want to see Checo doing better. And I want to see those double podiums as well for Red Bull. So it's a lot of like, I want all of these things, but we only have, you know, three podium spots and we'll, we'll see how it goes. And we'll see if, if Checo can make himself be consistent, which I, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe his little surf break will will help him. I mean, you're oh you're gosh. shaking your head. No, I I know how you feel about him. I know. I don't know why. I just can't stand Checo. Did you see the picture of him like leaning up against a car? Did I send that one to you? I think so. Yeah. His yeah, like yeah. legs are not proportionate to his body. None of these drivers have body parts that are proportional to their bodies. Their <laughs> necks are as wide as their heads, and then their legs are chicken legs. Like anyone listening. I implore you to go find this picture of Checo. It's probably on his grid in, on Instagram. But it's him leaning up against a car, and it's like, this has to be photoshopped because his legs do not look like they belong on this body. Like, they are so abnormally small. It's very interesting. Well, I don't know. You, you, gotta stay, you gotta stay tiny. I mean, obviously, they have weight <laughs> minimums. But, yeah, you, you gotta be tiny if you're gonna fit in these cars. These cars are not big. There's not a lot of room for, for people to, to get their They look horribly claustroph- claustrophobic. Like, I don't think I would enjoy sitting in that for 70-some laps at, like, 6 Gs. Doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> No, I have a I have a, a spot on on my back on this the spot that I'm holding on to right now um, that like when I get stressed out it gets itchy and I couldn't imagine just sitting in like in a little you know little tube in my car in under a race suit and under all those layers of like I can't reach that I would just die like I would not be comfortable at all. Well, and I like am con- like well look I have drink one drink two and drink three like I'm constantly drinking liquids. There's no way I'd make it through a race. I'd have to pee, and I'm yeah. not going to pee myself, because that's weird, and someone has to clean it up, so I yeah. would be like, hey guys, can we make this like a five-minute pit stop? <laughs> Someone's got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> got to go potty, sorry. <laughs> well, I think that when you're, when, you're, when you're busy like that, and when you're, when you're doing something, and when you're that involved, then you know, you're, you're not going to remember that you have to go to the bathroom until hours Probably. later, Probably but not. also, yes, I understand <laughs> that. Um, so what the last we thing we've about? got... I have no idea, but the okay. the last thing that we've got on our rundown um, is is the only other big piece of news that's been happening um, that I did a little bit of research on this morning, um, but is specifically on um, Felipe Massa, who's a former F1 driver. He was the 2008 championship runner up, um, and he is. It looks like he is going to be suing um, Formula One in the UK for. Um, Formula One and the FIA's um, part in the, I'm saying this in quotes, conspiracy that denied him the 2008 championship, which um, ultimately went to this um, upstart rookie named, hmm, what, what's his name? Oh, Lewis Hamilton. Um, you know, that guy. Um, but it, it looks like, you know, he, it looks like Moss is not trying to overturn the actual result and take the title. Um, I don't think for for a lot of reasons, I don't think that's possible, but it looks like he is um, looking for financial compensation for the loss because basically he's alleging that the Formula One boss at the time and the race director knew that um, in 2008 at the Singapore Grand Prix, um, they knew that Crashgate, which is this situation where Nelson Piquet Jr. deliberately crashed his car to give an advantage to his teammate, who's this you know, this, this driver 
driver. He's a two-time champion. Oh, Fernando Alonso. Um, and, and is known as one, one of the greatest scandals in the history of the sport other than McLaren Spygate. Both of which we will cover in F1 101 episodes in the future. Um, but basically, Renault cheated. The F1, F1 and FIA knew that Renault cheated. But here's the big but is while this did screw up Massa in the at the Singapore GP, Ferrari also screwed up their own they, they screwed over their own driver at the Singapore GP because they um, you know Ferrari has not had the best history with pit stops these last few years while they also haven't had great history with pit stops in 2008 when they um, they didn't un, unhook the the fuel the fuel hose um, on Massa's car so Massa took off with the hose had to stop and be wheeled back so that they could take the hose off and and then had a penalty that he had to serve. So he ultimately finished the Singapore GP 13th, didn't score points. Lewis did. Um, and I think one of the things that he's trying to do potentially is invalidate the complete Singapore GP results, um, which would take away Lewis's points and would basically de facto make Massa the world champion. But also, um, if anything is going to be invalidated, it would probably be the disqualification of both um, uh, or of the of the Renault result, which would have been um, Fernando's, which would have just given Nico Rosberg the win. Um, I don't remember where where um, Rosberg was driving at the time in 2008, but that's that's what it would have done. Um, but. You know, basically, we you know, it, it looks like Moss is looking for financial compensation for that loss. Unfortunately, two key figures in this situation, former F, um, FAA, um, F1 president and the former race director, um, they have both passed away. They're both dead. Um, so it, it's going to be very interesting to see how this legal battle shakes out. And also this legal battle is happening in the UK. Um, so... It's going to be interesting. It's one of those things that's going to be happening alongside um, the, you know, the rest of the season. Um, Massa's lawyers gave um, the FIA, the current iteration of the FIA, two weeks to respond. And that was as of Thursday the 17th, I believe. Um, so we will see what happens over these next two weeks and what ultimately comes of the situation. But they're not going to retroactively give Massa Lewis's 2008 title. It's just not happening. No. So... That was a really good recap because I like knew a little bit of this, but not this this whole thing. But I feel like this is just really, really, really hard to prove in court, and I feel like he's just chasing money, and I don't think he's gonna get anything. No, and obviously it's really unfortunate that you know he had this happen to him. You know, cheating is bad. Yeah, um, and then and then I think the the other thing is that he had a really bad accident in two thousand nine. Um, that you know ultimately you know he he had you know he had some traumatic damage to to his body in during that season. Um and didn't win a race again after 2008. So, yeah. you know, obviously that's, you know, a lot of that is, is weighing on him. And, and I think that this is, um, it, it'll be interesting to see what he gets and what he doesn't. And it's very, I think it's very unfortunate that he he's put in this position. Um, and I also think that uh, cheating is bad and the FIA sometimes forgets that and needs to, you know, not do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ugh. My goodness. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah. But. Especially in, in a British court. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the last, like, weird British court thing we had? It would had to be Force India, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if we're if from, from F1 standards, it would be, you know, for, Force India going into administration, getting, you know, fought by by uh, the, the conglomerate that includes Lawrence Stroll. And Daddy now Stroll. we have Aston Martin. <laughs> uh wild wild these worldly yeah. court systems we have but so interesting yeah. it's so interesting but yeah we'll keep you updated on that with any anything that comes out of it in the next two weeks because that's how long they have to respond so interesting okay. all right we well see. like i said earlier at the top of the episode coming out on thursday we will have our dutch gp predictions also i love where it's Zanvoort. I love saying that's that word, Zanvoort. Um, yeah. But Dutch GP is this weekend. 
and we will have our predictions and our prediction episode for you guys up 9 o'clock Eastern on Thursday, and then we will do a recap episode for you guys coming out on Monday. So stay tuned Pretty for much. that. Yep. But I'm Emily. And I've been Catherine. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.